everybody. Welcome to the Free Play Arcade podcast. I am Chris Delp. I am joined by Corey Hyden, president of Free Play Arcade, and Richard, say it again. Tregilligus. I will learn this name one day. <laughs> I can probably spell it, but um, he is the COO, also owner, of Free Play Arcade, and we are here to do a summer wrap up. But before we do, I want to tell you to subscribe wherever you are right now. If you're watching it on YouTube or listening to it on iTunes or wherever you are, we have a subscribe button somewhere in the vicinity and you can click it. We're on all major networks, so let's do that. And I also want to thank Mr. Brown, not Mr. Brown, Magic Cup. Mr. Brown's still cool. Mr. Brown's still cool, but Magic Cup is definitely fueling this podcast. This specific podcast is powered. Our local sponsor. By mm-hmm. the amazing Magic Cup. Chris's favorite place in the world, not called Free Play Arcade, maybe. I don't uh, know. It, it's in the top five. <laughs> it's certainly most visited. Um, they know me there for sure. Uh, they know us there, too. So thanks to them. And they sponsor Puzzle Night. Is that what they sponsor? That's, that's true. They sponsor all the Puzzle Nights, and they, they are known to send a representative or two to uh, Tuesday Night Fights to go win that. Nice, nice. All right. So today we are wrapping up what we announced as an it came true. It was the largest arcade event series of all time. Uh, we're going to have 40-something events, 45, 46 events that we're about to kind of go through. Some of them are going to be really simple to talk about. Tuesday Night Fights were part of it. But it all kind of revolved around this uh, discount card. And we tried this last year for with okay success. This year, it was much, you know, it was a big hit. Uh, you could buy a single card uh, that was a discount card. For thirty dollars, and you got six admissions to these events. They were event-specific admissions, and you could use your thirty dollars to get a normal admission and just at normal price. But the the crux of the card was you get a stamp for every event you attend. We've had dozens and dozens and dozens of full cards now turned in because people realize, man, that's a that's a great deal. That's mm-hmm. a, and that's a great way to experience it because if the event happened to be on Saturday, when we never give half off entry you still got a half off entry to a huge special event. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, we did a nice little marketing campaign against it. I'm going to read this little paragraph of um, copy because like earlier in this summer, while I was getting hyped for free play, didn't I really got into Miami? I like eighties Miami, like control. And you know, I've generally loved eighties Miami, but you might've noticed from our summer shirts, which none of us have on eighties um, Miami is, uh, is one of the distinctive like 80s visions in everyone's head. Um, so I, I was kind of into that. I was tr- trying to get that vibe so that we could get the vibe for Free Play Denton, right? Which is, you know, almost there now, I think. Um, so I'm going to read this and it's imagine for a moment you're driving down a palm line drive, the roar of the ocean to your right, the golden roar of commerce to your left. Everything is deco, deco, sorry, everything is deco, neon, and better. You see a sign in the distance. It reads arcade. You mash the accelerator. Your Ferrari, your white Ferrari Testarossa surges. In seconds, you pull into your spot near the front door. You jump out, straighten your look, walk into what many will call the best arcade in the history of the world. And then, you know, we talk about how, you know, we can't give you all of that, but we can give you some of it. We can, we can, <laughs> we can give you, you know, as close to the best arcade as possible, that kind of stuff. We can't give you the Testarossa or the palm trees or the ocean, but um, you got you got to rent the Testarossa and get it out there at some point. Seriously, um, and so it was, but the it was about having a ton of cool summer events, yes, and which we um, did, we really did. So we're just going to start. Uh, these events ran from May 29th, and they're going to run through September 12th with some just some wrap up events, some follow up events. Um, so we're actually not fully done with the summer, but we're done with all the main summer events. And we wanted to just kind of wrap up because this has kind of controlled our lives. Certainly Chris's life. <laughs> yes, I've been to virtually <laughs> all of these events, maybe 98% of them, something and, like that. And all the big events, Richard and I obviously spent a lot of time prepping, getting everything lined up. So uh, we'll start May 29th. We had a nice little Tuesday night fights on Matra Melee. Yes, that is the fighting game where you have bizarre like there's a furry there's two twin grandmothers that are fighting the grannies i love the yes grannies. there's there's an old guy who just clearly got out of the shower he has a, uh, a a a a towel on and that's it other bizarre characters like that neo geo classic every stage has a different uh band that's playing a full concert in the background which is so <laughs> needlessly bizarre and uh we had previously done a match for melee tournament it was quite popular and i had a popular promo where i had my roommate's grand 
grandmother actually oh, right, call right. out Michael Beltran. Well, for this event, I went back to them and and special requested that they come out. So indeed, Sue, the uh, the grandmother in question, was my partner for the two v two Tuesday night fights, <laughs> and Michael Beltran got her husband, and they played together as well. That's a nice little tie into that event. Yeah, it was um, fun. It was a fun time. Did she play as one of the granny characters? Absolutely, you, like, absolutely. You like, it has to. It was like a, a requirement, right? Yeah, and one one of our best clips uh, or of the summer on Twitch is actually. Um, Michael Beltran's partner, Bud, uh, playing the old man character, pulls off the fart super and gets a kill with it. (laughs) And the crowd goes bananas. So uh, what what kind of turnout? Pretty good turnout for that event? Man, you're going to ask me that a few times and I will honestly not know. Yes, a pretty good turnout. Well, that's the cool thing about summer events, right? Because like summer, especially this summer, but most summers in Texas, it's outrageously Mm -hmm. hot. It's, you know, we had 110, 112 degree day this summer. So no one is out there doing anything. Everyone has to go find air conditioning and free play. Yeah, a lot it's of oppressive. It. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's terrible to be out there. You've got to go somewhere and do something. And with the death of the malls, the tragic death of the malls and stuff like that, people have to find entertainment destinations. And mm-hmm. free play, you know, is an awesome entertainment destination. So the cool thing about the summer is. No matter what Tuesday night fight it is, no matter what puzzle night it is, the attendance goes up because you can't be outside. You can't do anything else. And mm-hmm. so it's uh, it's really cool to have these events because the summer is not only our busiest time as an arcade, but it's the busiest event time for us. And I think a lot of places would actually do it differently. But, I, you know, like they'd have their a bunch of events during their slow time to try to boost their numbers. But I think this is cool because it captures like that total mayhem of the arcade. Oh, man, that game is such mayhem. Uh, the... Uh the special shout out to, I believe, the champions that night, which were uh, our own Toya Kai, who's been on the podcast before, and her partner, Jeremy Golden, who picked up his fourth belt. Whoa, nice. Was that her first? It was her first, <laughs> yes. I believe she won another one in this in this summer as well. All right, so then we had the uh, Puzzle Night at Richardson, Magical Drop 3. Um, great game. Mm-hmm. Always a crowd favorite. Awesome. Yes. I mean... And puzzle nights have to be getting kind of hard for you, though, right? Because it's like there's, it's a, it's, there's a limited amount of puzzle games. Correct. And in a perfect world, it, it seems like every single puzzle night would be on just something completely new. Right. Yeah, um, that would be that would be ideal. But like you said, there aren't a ton of separate puzzle games to do. Um, we also have like amazing, like an amazing, amazing Tetris player who who makes it both a spectacle and a, a foregone conclusion who's going to win any Tetris night. Right. And, you, he, and he supports every puzzle night, so I do want to do pu- puzzle night Tetris as well, and we have. And well, didn't, wasn't one of yours, like, everyone versus him? Correct. It was the whole arcade <laughs> versus Ed Bradburn. We all got one credit. He got one credit. That was not sufficient, so I gave everybody else in the arcade <laughs> just, two more just, credits. Everyone just kept playing on my... And we still lost by a million he points. He was up there for, like, hours just, just destroying people. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Hit him on the left side <laughs> the entire time. Us just wanders, wandering around just trying. Interestingly enough, that's a, that event happened at the Arlington Tetris, which is the closest to a full-size dedicated Tetris that existed. It was a factory um, Atari build. Right. Um, but the, the only dedicated Tetris is generally our cabarets. The cool thing about that is I just did a really cool rebuild, and I hope it all holds. I hope it all works. Um, that game is playing better than ever. So if you're thinking about running and doing it, uh, Puzzle Night on Tetris, Arlington is really set up well for it right now. A cabaret, is that like the cocktail No, style? so so the cabaret is just a smaller. Mini. Um, okay. it, yeah, some of them. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Atari actually did make dedicated Tetris mm-hmm. cabarets. There's just no, but this one did come from the factory as an Atari, as an Atari Tetris. But it's in a cab that Atari put a couple other games in there, so it's not considered a dedicated game. It was like it, I think they call it factory conversions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, but it's it's as close as it gets, and it's playing better than ever right now in Arlington. So it might be fun to feature it again. All right. The, so the side on the right has significantly more plays than the side on the left. Really? <laughs> <laughs> this is because we burned oh, a thousand credits okay. trying to chase Ed. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Uh, so then this is kind of a pretty big story of the summer. So this is back in June fifth. Um, and I feel like that that's maybe just a little bit after, maybe just before the third strike community really started to come together out at Arlington. I mean, they they've been supportive of each other, but it's kind of reaching this fevered pitch now um, yeah. where the third strike guys are just re- like we've been working on a third strike community for a long time. But it really takes that one kind of spark in the community. And it seems like that happened. There was a Tuesday night fights June 5th, Street Fighter 3 third strike. Yes, and we have been doing it once every six weeks until that point. Uh, maybe even past that. I'm not. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But uh, 
Yeah, I don't recall. I believe, I know Victor Chang won one of these and he has been the impetus about like moving the Third Strike community forward, getting together on his own, doing their little Third Strike Thursdays, which they started later in the summer. So uh, this was this was a big event for the Third Strike community, even if it wasn't like the most well-attended Tuesday night fights ever, which happens later. Right, right. <laughs> um, okay, and then we had our first. So there are three main kind of rotating events during the summer. We've got Tuesday night fights, um, mm-hmm. Well, and maybe you've got Puzzle Night, but you also have Pinball Monday. So that you have mm-hmm. you have Tuesday Night Fights happens every week. Yes. Then you alternate things like Pinball Monday, Puzzle mm-hmm. Nights. And then most weeks on Wednesday, we do either a brewery event or a beer event mm-hmm. where it's a pint night or something like that. And then, of course, uh, we have the big special events. Yeah. And then we have these the monster events that will come up soon. So our first brewery event for the summer was with Texas Ale Project um, at Free Play Richardson. I remember that uh, event it was actually a really well attended event, really, really big one. Um, it was just the very first. We had been working on a Texas L project for a while, um, event, and it was it was great. They make great beer. It's pretty easy. Um, you know, fire and funeral is a big one. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I don't drink myself. Right. I do do the you so work I, the events. I do I do I do the game challenges and right. um. You know, I, I a lot of times I'll work with a rep from, in this case, Texas Ale, and uh, I, it, it it's hard for me to like distinguish like specific ones not drinking it myself. Well, and at some point during this, um, as Chad Montgomery was finishing his build at Silverpore, he started joining you every Wednesday to kind of do like a quick little impromptu live podcast, live kind of. Um, Correct. Yeah, because we started. You know, given that I run the community group and also don't drink and don't have a connection to all these nice craft beers, and I do appreciate. The bar at Free Play Arcade, Richardson, Arlington, and especially Denton with his 52 taps. Like, that's that's really cool to me in concept, even if I don't drink. So I felt like I was underserving that populace in my our community group. So Brandon Cole started doing a weekly craft beer segment that rolled into a weekly craft beer podcast. And who better than Chad Montgomery running a Texas beer Texas Beer Fest, I believe. Yeah, yes. he, yeah. he runs big the- Texas, big Texas Beer Fest. That's right. Right. <laughs> didn't, sound, didn't sound quite right. It is. Yeah, and you might remember from the Texas L Project, the big thing that we had there was we had one of the very first kegs of the Hawaiian Roadrunner they had made, um, which was like a tropical blonde, super summer beer, perfect for that kind of event because it was the start of our summer project. It was a great beer. Uh, it was a great event. We gave away. So and, and at these brewery events, the primary thing we're doing is having the breweries give away a bunch of swag and us give away a bunch of summer stuff. Right. Yeah. Everything that they that they bring, the brewery brings, we give away that night. We also add our own T-shirts. Uh, with the, the the shades, the oh yeah, shutter, 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 shades. shutter shades. We have, you know, and I gotta get like the free play I, branded I th- squirt guns. I think the big deal here is we've got free play branded squirt guns, um, but I need to get free play shutter shades. I need to actually have our oh. logo printed on the sides or something, and and really make those the good ones. Like have still have the generic ones, but have like the big prize be the branded ones or something for next right year. Right across the shades. Right, <laughs> that would be so cool. Free play. But uh, so, yeah, we do have branded squirt guns because it turns out with squirt guns, the <laughs> only way to get a, a squirt gun that looks like a super soaker. Now, these are a little smaller, but it looks like a mini version of a super soaker 50 mm-hmm. um, is to buy them from those websites that, you know, they are like merch websites. They want you to brand stuff and it costs us less to put our logo on it than to just buy the squirt gun that I wanted. So <laughs> I said, screw this. We're going to. So we have a free play logo on the side of a squirt gun. We don't actually encourage people to squirt the squirt guns in our arcade uh, for obvious reasons. But uh, I, yeah. I actually have fun and I've, I've gotten very used to over the last couple of years giving that that speech about how, yes, it is a free play branded squirt gun. You can see <laughs> it right here. It's got a brand. It's not a sticker. You can feel it. And uh, I can't let you have it right now. <laughs> you can get it when you leave so that you don't destroy our classic arcade. Why do we have a free play branded squirt gun? Because my boss is crazy and we all know that. Well, and I think it's awesome. I, one of the things that we did that on un, not unintentional, but the bartenders took upon themselves doing last year was if some and we, we discouraged it this year. Didn't, I don't think it happened, but it was one of the craziest arcade stories I've heard. They would sell a shot, and if the person had a squirt gun, they'd pour the shot into the squirt gun, 
<laughs> and let the person walk around and shoot the squirt gun in their mouth that ha- with the liquor in it. Um, we didn't do that this year. It certainly did not happen but, this but year. But that is one of the craziest arcade stories ever, right? <laughs> you go to an arcade, right? A retro arcade. All of a sudden, you've won a squirt gun for some reason. And all of a sudden, the bartender's like, yo, let me pour a shot in that. And then you're walking around the arcade, like, shooting yourself with liquor. Awesome. Yeah. No, <laughs> didn't happen this year. We're just we're generally discouraging that. So if you get any ideas from the podcast, don't do it. But that's, like, crazy. That's amazing that that would happen just organically at an arcade. And we, we would do different game challenges throughout those events. Uh, good examples are just arbitrary high scores, hit, you know, get 20,000 points on Ms. Pac-Man, which most people who know the game can do. Something like that. Uh, beat a specific challenge. Beat this level. Or, you know, scavenger hunt style. Go find me a, an American flag in the... Uh, in, a, in an arcade game, show me a picture, you win a prize, things like that. Right, right. Okay, so, uh, and then this is another kind of story of the summer. It, it didn't start during the summer, but it's really starting to reach the super size. June 11th was June Pinball Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've seen your crowds growing. And yeah. we've talked about this, we've kind of briefly mentioned this in another podcast, but the regularity of it, just having that day, one day a month, where you know you're going to have a lot of cool, awesome pinball competition has really seemed to uh, bring about like just an amazing pinball community. Yeah, yeah, and we we found a format. That's that's was uh, you know I'd always wanted to to serve the the pinball community as well, and it was actually at Texas Pinball Festival this year that uh, a a pro out in Houston gave me a format that would work in less than four hours, which is we need you know, you come right. in at seven, we're closing by eleven. It has to be open to the public. There's a lot of caveats to doing it. Um, you need a lot of tables. Free Play Arlington has that. Um, but he gave me the three strikes formula, and uh, it works perfectly. Basically, it's a triple elimination tournament across all the pinball tables of Free Play Arlington. Uh, it can remain open to the public, and you can wander in and play it as we go. And uh, yeah, first two players move on. The, the two players who get the least score get a strike, but then you move on anyway. You pair it Swiss. If you played Magic the Gathering out there, you're familiar with Swiss formatting. Um, that means the winners play the winners, the losers play the losers, and uh, everybody gets a balanced good time. And you get at least three good games of pinball in. Right. And, I mean, so far it seems like, I mean, not only is it growing, but it seems like the players are really, really into the format, into just the night, the night of pinball. Um, so, yeah, again, I'm going to try and look up uh, results as we go, but yeah. But And what's really cool here is, uh, of course, we're talking about these events that are just totally bonus and you can get them, you can actually get in half off if you have that discount card. So all this extra work that we're doing, we're not only are we trying to get you to pay admission, we're giving you a discounted admissions card just designed to get you to come to more and more events. Um, and I think that's, I mean, I, there's probably a, a businessman out there that's going to hear this eventually and be like, this is a dumb idea, guys. <laughs> you should charge more for your events. But, you know, we love the community. We will love the community participation and things that we can do to get more people participating. Uh, we just think that's good business to, to, to you know, make our community come out more, to be together more, to spend it, more time together. It's so easy to get caught in your rut, no matter where you are, of trying the same thing, finding that you like it, do it over and over again, and just not trying everything else. We have a curated selection of, what, an average of a... We, we, we have many, many, many games in the arcades. We have, Wildly so we, different. We have 102, I think, at Richardson now. We okay. have like 134 or something, something. Uh, at Arlington, including the pinball and all of that. Um, Arlington is their game count numbers actually gone down slightly because we keep putting those big huge because we, we got the six player X Men there. We've got like, Let's Go Jungle. We've got Let's Go Jungle, the full Lost World Jeep. We've got like six other four player games. The and Double we Daytonas. Have, oh yeah, we have Double Daytona. We have Tecmo yep. out there. So um, their games have gotten a little bit bigger because that's a bigger space, so it, it can serve those games better um, and still deliver an awesome deal. And then Free Play Din, which is five dollars only ever um, to come in has about 56 games, 57 games total, including the pinball. Um, we were there yesterday. Ama- I love that arcade so much. It's amazing. All right, so uh, coming off Pinball Monday. Relatively we- sure it was Nick Gall that won June Pinball Monday. Uh, right. I Because the first one was Brennan Steele, and there's been a different winner of Pinball Monday every single Pinball Monday, and I believe that was Nick's. Yeah, Nick I, Nick definitely won one. I think that might have been the second. Everybody, so. Nobody has won twice yet. When's so, the next Pinball Monday coming up in September? This mo- well, I'm uh, sorry, the Monday after we are filming this podcast. So <laughs> I believe it's nine. I don't know. Well, you, the, if you're the, listening the, to this, the you second, need a calendar. The second Monday in September, 
it, which it, which our producer is telling us is nine ten. So yeah, if you're listening to this, you will not you right. will not have the chance to go to it. But you should catch the one in October. Come to the next one. Uh, all right. So which I think we're moving the whole scheduling well, around. Those Does pinball that... events are growing wildly. So uh, come join in on the fun. Yeah, yeah it'll come. be it'll be the next one after this podcast is released is October fifteenth. Well, and here's something that uh, at least will stir some discussion. Based on the success of Pinball Monday, I have considered getting a couple extra pinball tables for Arlington in a permanent fashion. Why? Um, so, uh, all the pinball people, let's go complain that we haven't done <laughs> that yet. Right now, they have Free Play Arcade Community Group. Um, all right. So, next up was Waku Waku 7 Tuesday Night Fights at Free Play Richardson. Uh, <laughs> awesome game. So, I, I was actually talking about Waku Waku 7 yesterday because that's how my life is. Um, <laughs> and it, it, to me, it's really interesting because that's like both the goofiest fighting game, but also like a, one of the better fighting games. Like they took the fighting game aspect of it super seriously, but made the goofiest possible fighting game from it. Yeah. Um, Cause I was like- Well, it's a Neo Geo game. Yeah, it is, it's on, it's an so, MV, well, yeah, we, we run the MVS version on our one of our Neo Geos. Um, and, well, that's that's correct. But uh, yeah, the the same kind of uh, amazing art style, bit, bit style of graphics um, that you, you see throughout that era. They, they made those games for a long, long time. And uh, much like Matra Melee, this has just got insane characters, but an insane system as well, where you're constantly charging your super. So right. you have seven super bars, but you can just stand there and stall, and you'll gain another super, or three. <laughs> well, and the way they used projectiles in the game, it almost encourages people to make sure they keep a distance while they're waiting for their super so that they can move in with a strong attack, because otherwise they're just dodging projectiles. It's a, I mean, One it's, of the characters is literally a tank. Right, right. Called Poly Tank. So... Um, you have a... You have a, 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 a um, Indiana Jones ripoff with a with a whip. You have a lot of characters that are just just <laughs> blatant ripoffs of different pieces of media. There's a Ryu type character. Of course, it's not actually Ryu. You know, yeah. So Waku Waku Seven was, I mean, uh, not not super late in the Neo Geo um, lineup, but not certainly not one of the early ones. The only complaint I have about Waku Waku is I wish there were more characters. Um, it always feels right. like the 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 lineup's just a little limited, but it's an amazing game. I was trying to look up who I play. I think it's Maru. There, there aren't a ton of, of uh, right. characters, so we'll figure it out there in a sec. <laughs> All right, so after Walk, I mean, Walk Walk Seven, awesome. Um, it re- so it seems like to me right now your Tuesday night philosophy is every six weeks you're going to hit third strike in Super Turbo. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Well, with with the predominance of of uh, third strike events right now, I'm, I'm reconsidering the every six weeks on third strike. Just because there's a lot of third strike events happening, right? Because every Thursday and every Sunday they're having meetups right now, right? Right. Yeah. And I and I try, you know, lest we get accused of of over over emphasizing Super Turbo. I actually don't hit Super Turbo that often. It usually ends up being about quarterly, which means the Super Turbo nights go in even, even more insane. Well, and our our Super Turbo. The the great thing about our Super Tur- Turbo community is most nights you can find a player at one of the free plays that's you know that you probably know from the community group. So if you're in the community group. You'll be able to go play and just have casuals almost, you know, almost any time we're open. Right. Yeah. At, at Especially, you know, as part of the group, you know, that's just part of our philosophy. You post it up to, hey, I'm going out and I want to play Mortal Kombat tonight. People show up out of the woodworks to pl- woodwork to play with you. Right. So, uh, and that's, I mean, that's kind of what we want. We want a bunch of casuals leading into the Tuesday night fights and then leading into the eventual big tournaments like during the spring series and everything. Yeah. But usually we rotate somewhere in between a Street Fighter game, a Mortal Kombat game. Uh, a Neo Geo game, things like that, and then just keep rotating. Uh, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, something in the Versus series. All right, so then we have June thirteenth. This is a special date because there were two events on June thirteenth. Um, so uh, over in Arlington, we had Panther Island Brewing, cool Tarrant County brewery coming out doing a cool brewery event, and then over at Richardson, we had the inaugural. This was the very first one, I believe, uh-huh. the Pandas Unite event. Yes, uh, <laughs> I guess briefly explain to us what Pandas what Unite. What is a panda? <laughs> so, so the aforementioned Toya, who is getting name dropped a lot, came up with this concept. Uh, it's basically, a, a pack. It's a pack of wolves. Like the the name for a group of pandas is an embarrassment. Nice. She loved that, so she organized all of the casual players of fighting games, predominantly women, but not necessarily right, all. Right. And uh, they they are the people who show up to Tuesday night fights all the time, and they help us commentate, produce. They play the game every time, and they don't necessarily care if they're getting better or win. They do care if they pick the right color costume, things like that. They name themselves the Panda Embarrassment. 
and uh yeah they'll come up they'll they'll dress as pandas they'll or or in panda themed <laughs> outfits uh i know i know someone has a really cool shirt out there that says the panda corn warrior and it's a it's a panda with a unicorn's um um a uh, horn and then riding a, a a horse or something crazy like that <laughs> um so yeah, they, they went and met that night and I wasn't able to be there, which is, I was saddened because I wasn't the other event right. that was happening. And uh, and yeah, so they, they organize and, and meet up about once a month, varying relocation. And of course they, they come to our Tuesday night fights and different events as well. Um, yeah, as they, they, they hit it in quite not the big numbers. Two, well, day, two nights ago but that's really awesome to like just you know to have it's that a, it's group a, to a dedicated casual right. fighting game group it might be the only one like it in the world <laughs> right. it's amazing well it's a great idea um all right so just two days after that after our double we had one of the coolest parties that it, it all it feels like a year ago already the free play arlington one year anniversary party with calling jack burton it does so, feel like a year ago well so the big thing is it feels like free play arlington has been open for like a decade to me mm-hmm. like it feels like that that's just like a long standing arcade that has always been around but it, it's it was only turning one um this june mm-hmm. uh and we brought calling jack burton um so let's let's i guess let's do a quick step back back when we did the grand opening party for free play arlington uh we had the rich girls show up we had a lot mm-hmm. of cool cool acts a lot of cool stuff happening um we had dj mike b there and i think that was one of the very first dj mike b events we ever had um because he came on after the rich girls i think you're right and um it was like a blowout event. It was well attended. It was really insane. Um, and I mean, it, I know it was cathartic for most of the free play employees because I'm pretty sure like no one did any work the next day after that um, <laughs> grand opening party or could even like walk. It was amazing. And so then we had the. I, um, I really love when when the the live bands come out to perform different free plays. Uh, the rich girls. I remember that 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 grand opening performance and the, the enduring memory for me about that particular day was seeing FUD, AKA Noun, who the, is the Street Fighter player who travels in from Kansas, posting pictures, because we streamed from Super Turbo that entire event. So they were playing casuals the whole time. There's literally a band in the background. You can't hear anything. And he posts all these screen caps of him just smiling. And he was like, I can't remember the last time I smiled and was at an arcade. Right. And there was just, just, <laughs> A stream of them and and he sort of like gave this the, the story of each smile he found so we this was one of the first events so we, we had colin jack burton coming for the right, anniversary for the anniversary party uh, for the and colin jack burton has become kind of i mean it is if to the extent we could ever have a house band they don't, they're not from dallas so right. it's, it's, it's Austin area, correct? very expensive it, it would be very difficult to do but they are like our house band to the they have the vibe they they nail it 100 and it there are a lot of they can cover literally the entire playlist well that's the key like there are a lot of cover bands but there are very few that captured like the 80s like calling jack burton and of course none of these kids, i mean i don't actually know how old anyone is but these are not people that were alive listening in, at clubs in the 80s right um, they're younger people from austin that just uh crush but it's amazing because their stage presence i mean the way that they they dance they goof around on stage i mean they make this music fun and relatable for the modern age and they we've we've had them out before Mm -hmm. um and they played the uh the first year the one year for richardson for most of our anniversary Um, parties so yeah and so we had i i wanted them to come out for the one year for arlington and this was one of the first events that we i mean this was a summer nights event so you get in for five bucks (laughs) right um on a saturday or friday i can't remember um, and the great thing is it was a Friday and the great thing here is like, well, it was so low stakes for the people that are coming. You didn't have to buy your tickets because we sold for the one year at Richardson. We sold $25 tickets mm-hmm. sold out. Um, and you know, we had to do a lot of extra prep. We had to do a lot of extra stuff just to make sure that people felt like they were getting adequate value this year. We sold VIP tickets. Um, for thirty dollars, that just included an epic swag pack. So for thirty dollars, you got a recently released Team Free Play shirt. You got an anniversary pint glass. Um, you got a, the Camera wristband set. The Heaven is a Place on Earth wristband set. Um, champagne during the toast and admission to the party. Um, so 
That's a huge deal. I mean, not only are you getting a live value, you're not only are you getting a live show, you get a whole swag bag for $30. It's well, amazing. And this was the first event that we did a, a VIP package for. Isn't that correct? Yeah. So, because we were trying to get away from ticketed events because it, it causes all this stuff because our ticketed events sell out and then people get Right. There are always upset. people waiting at the door. Why aren't you open? And then the only way to run a ticketed event too is since you're not... You're going to tell people it's sold out. It's no, it's all sales final, no refunds. So if someone doesn't show up, they they hold it against you a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we're we're trying to get away from that. There's we're still going to have ticketed events. We're gonna we're about to announce some uh, for this fall. But uh, it was ten dollars at the door, or five dollars if you had your card, or thirty dollars for that epic swag pack. A huge deal, and this place was rocking. Um, and it was. Uh, Colin Jack Burton killed it. it. That may have been my favorite set of theirs that they've done so far. Yeah, well, everything came together. Like the acoustics were great. The speaker placement was like top notch. Mm -hmm. um, and our, you know, our sound guy was there just crushing it, making sure that I was like, dude, I want it loud. And he was like, got you. And, <laughs> and that was it. That was like, it was loud the whole time, but perfect. It was balanced. All right. All Shout out to Emerald City Productions. Yeah, they um, like this. This exact show was so perfect, and I was, I, you know, most of the time I'm running around during these events like a chicken with my head cut off trying to put out all these fires, but I was able to sit there and listen to these songs, and it just felt so perfect. It felt awesome. A massive crowd there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was a packed house. We, we were right at capacity when they went on, and then they played an extra long set. Yeah, so we had a, a an employee chosen montage, I believe, of, of songs that were to play afterwards. Well, yeah. So in the background, we'd pass around a list saying, give us three of your favorite music videos from the 80s, and we're going to build a cool montage. And we, we actually went to all the locations, got all everyone's favorite, so we could do like a cool, balanced employee choice montage. Right. It was and, scheduled and to go on at midnight. Yeah, and and you had, and you had uh, Orlando give the the year anniversary speech, which was really special for him. He's been there the whole time. He wore the why isn't our kid why isn't Arlington open shirt? No, no, we, we wish, wish Arlington was open. There we go. Open there we go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was uh, it was fantastic. He gave a great speech. He was incredibly nervous. Oh yeah, that was that was actually the most fun I've ever had, like as a boss, because I got to get up there and I've done it so many times. It's just, I mean, some of my speeches are better than others, but I've just done it so much. There's no nerves, right? Um, so I was just like, all right, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and toss this to Orlando, GM here at Arlington, and, and you here can watch it online. And and so there, he walks up and he's got like he's he's gonna do a shot. Uh, for uh, he had a reason, and then he was gonna drink the employee favorite beer, right? right now. So he's gonna have a shot in a beer, one for the crowd, one for the employees, and everything. And his hands are shaking so <laughs> much. He's, he's just like, and you know, it's it's just it's interesting because I mean, public speaking is just hard. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, even you know, you got these big acts that'll come. They'll get nervous before they go on, and then they fall into it. But yeah, I don't think Orlando's ever had to do something like that. That's, I doubt it. No. I mean, there were probably two hundred or three hundred people just around the stage. When he's oh getting, yeah, big he's crowd. Getting, he's getting his toast. And the crowd, most of them know Orlando and are, are yelling at him from the audience. Well, yeah, that was yeah. Everyone Shut that, up, Orlando. Everyone, yeah. everyone that was close to him um, was from the community group or is just a longtime friend of Free, free Play. So he, <laughs> it was a nerve wracking experience. He got through it. He did a great job. Yeah, and then uh, I remember the uh, the lead singer of Calling Jack Burton going up to Orlando afterwards and is like, you know, can we? We're having fun. Can, can we just go ahead and run a few extra songs? Yeah, so we were three like, hours into their show, and they went ahead and did another 40 minutes because it was just such a kill. They, I think they knew it. I think they knew they were like in the zone. They were just crushing it. Yeah. When you have a crowd that right. balances like that, I mean, that's ideal for them. They probably don't get that well, which, everywhere they go. What's really great is I walked in, or I was walking around, and someone came up to me and was like, I had no idea y'all ever had bands. Like, they had no idea what night it was. They had no idea. And they were like, this is the greatest thing I've ever done. Like, this is it. This is it. And I was just like, man, they're really crushing it tonight. Thank you for coming. It's our one-year anniversary. They're like, this is insane. The yeah. downside to that is that did lead to several comments that were like, hey, I'm in a band. Can I come play at your <laughs> oh. place? I got quite a few of those questions. Well, yeah, really and, following. And so, Though we have live music occasionally. I'll forward you the DJ <laughs> requests. It, oh, yes. We have hundreds of DJ requests. It's pretty... We're, we're, we don't do that many events every year. Um, and there are lots of cool venues that that do. Um, but we're not set up for it. And, and one of the reasons is, like, when we do one of these events, we're bringing in all the speakers for mm. one night only. We're bringing in the stage for one. I mean, it's like a big, long... It's a huge setup for us. Um and we've we've contemplated things like a future free play having a permanent stage stuff like that, but we're not there yet. So uh, though we always like to look at um, different bands and stuff, and if you're in a band, feel free to email. Um, just do so with low expectations of us actually being able to, to book you. Because... Richard at freeplayinc.com. <laughs> That's Richard at freeplayinc.com. So here's something I forgot about this anniversary party though. 
complimentary dipping dots for oh, two hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Did so, it last two hours? Uh, you know what? They, they exp- that was a hot ticket right there. They, it, I think they sold out like 10 minutes before the two hours up. Like they, they brought it. We brought something like 500 servings or 480 servings or something like that. Um, and it was a uh, huge rush at the beginning, probably like 400 servings. Mm-hmm. And because, I mean, we were probably we were a little below occupancy at that time because it started at six. The live band wasn't going on until nine. So most people show up around eight or nine for that. The the meat of the party. But then you kind of saw everyone realizing, hey, there's there's like a, another serving or two. And so they're like, man, I guess I'm going back for dip and dot seconds and stuff. Because <laughs> we had made sure that we would have enough for those two hours and we still didn't make it through those two hours. Yeah. Um, now, someone someone uh, someone brought me a, a dip and dots like it's going to go away. Here you go. Try right. it. <laughs> they're terrible. It's, okay. It's it's not the best ice cream, <laughs> uh, but it's from the you future. Know, it is from the future. <laughs> so you know, taste taste change over time. Mm-hmm. And if you, I bet if you gave that to someone from the '60s, it would absolutely blow their mind. <laughs> right. This uh, is this is this is ice cream from the future of the future. <laughs> it's uh no, it's, I mean it was it was a lot know, of fun. It was. I just a, love how nostalgic we are about the ice cream of our future. Well, yeah. it, what's really weird too is like I love every retro future event. <laughs> Dippin' does taste different, like three there's like three or four different stages while you're eating it when you first get it it tastes like dry ice mm-hmm. and you're you're like burning your tongue because it's so cold and then the next stage is like you're like oh this vaguely tastes like flavors and then it gets a little melting it tastes like ice cream all of a sudden <laughs> it's a it's a really cool gimmick though i, I don't know it, it, is, it is i think i like that middle stage right right in between the melty and the uh dry ice because that's when you really feel <laughs> futuristic because you got like the it's all the air coming out of your mouth is vaporizing or whatever it's really cool all right and then we did we did have the uh, video the music video montage i've played it a couple times now um here and there because i thought it was really cool it came out really well um every single employee i think got a song in there um while still being able to balance because what was really great is we sent that out and we're like give us your favorite 80s music video and some of these employees were sending stuff that could never be played like either to the public or during a party or that just had terrible music videos right well yeah that was that was true they would give their favorite songs but the music video of it was just like a blank screen with like a dot jumping up and down and you didn't understand what was going on or it was really blurry or... i, I want to say i picked bell biv devoe poison so that i could play third strike with hugo and poison while that <laughs> song was on the air poison was yeah poison made it um and what was really great is Carlos from the Richardson Kitchen. He picked such party songs that I was that he I think all three of his songs. He was the only person that had all three songs make it. I, I do believe Eddie Murphy uh, "Party All the party Time." All the time. I, well, that was like the first song on the playlist and it, the only song. It just repeated. No, <laughs> that's <laughs> that was it. In. We got so that was the uh, the one year. That was an amazing party. Um, Han picked a song from the '80s playlist that we hear every day, and I wanted to hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we hear 80s quite a bit. What was really great, though, is we, I was at dinner yesterday, and we'd been working all day um, on different line cleaning and arcade work and stuff. And the playlist came on at 3, and it had been a little bit since I'd heard it. And I was like, nope, I love this. This is it. I love this music. Uh, and I, I don't know if I'll ever get tired of it. I have to. Eventually, I have to, but I'm not there yet. And I've probably listened to it more than everyone else. That's why I, that's why I was chosen for this job. There, there, are, there are many songs where I am, I am head bobbing and singing along, even, even today. And I've been there so many times. All right. So one year party. Awesome. That was a great first year. So and just to give a quick heads up to people, as you get away from the first year anniversary party, the anniversary parties go kind of slower, smaller until you get to the fifth year. So like Richardson coming up on his third year anniversary. I just want to make sure everyone do not <laughs> expect a blowout for the third year anniversary. Because at this point, when you've, when you've been over for three years, you got to get a little cooler. you got to be like, yeah, of course I'm over for three. Of course. But then the fifth is going to be an epic blowout. All right. so, you do yeah. every five years. So, yeah. Then. So, so then, yeah, the fifth, the tenth, the fifteenth, the 20th, those kind of things will be blowout parties. I don't really know. I haven't actually thought. I just I need to start thinking about that. But um, we have a couple of years. It, it will not. Uh, we're going to. I mean, we're going to have to book some acts right now. No, I don't know. Uh, all right. So after the first year, the one year, we had a kind of cool Tuesday Night Fights over at Arlington. On Samurai Showdown Five Special, I believe that's the first weapon-based game. I might be wrong. Yeah, I think it is the first weapon-based game we had at Tuesday Night Fights on, and it was a huge hit. Um, so much fun, heavy, heavy damage in that game, and obviously Samurai Showdown Five Special is incredibly rare. It was the first time it had ever been on the floor, and um, it was it was it's really uh, well liked in the community, and it's it's well liked for a reason. It's a great game. 
and uh, we had a lot of fun with it. That was uh, Dylan Smith's first uh, free play Tuesday Night Fights championship. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. He's so, won everything else, but right. that was the first time he had actually won Tuesday Night Fights. Well, yeah, fi- so because it's kind of interesting with Dylan. He's like, he has a baseline above almost every player. Right. But like with the, a lot of the fighting games, they've played it so much that they've been able right. to... Yeah, yeah, uh, we've we've created a special class of of players here at Free Play that are just really good at pop up style events. You give them a game, you don't tell them the rules, and go. And Dylan is is one of the 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 three kings of of that style of play. So he's won every type of event. And this one, uh, you know, again, it was it was the first time it was on the floor. So this is the the type of event that he would win. But it was his first Tuesday Night Fights win. And I remember an epic final. Uh, I believe it was Jeremy Golden again who was fighting him off, fighting him off, and. Uh, yeah, just just with sword combat, it's the damage is so high that it just it turns on a dime, and it's a very very quick match, quick game, lots of cool mechanics. Loved it. Well, yeah. So Samurai Showdown is a pretty storied franchise. It's just kind of hard to more to with pick. the Neo Geo artwork. That's fantastic. Right. Well, yeah. So it, it was the I mean it was the it was the Neo Geo kind of weapon game, I and mean, Neo Geo had a ton of great fighters, but Samurai Showdown is is kind of way away up there on it. But Samurai Showdown Five Special is probably the last. Um, it's either last or second to last Neo Geo game period that ever came out. Um, it was so late and so tight, they even made a JAMA board set just for it that wasn't a cartridge um, because that was just, I mean, that's how they released it. Yeah, I think I think more people have played that particular one on console because it was so late on the Neo Geo life sta- lifespan. Well, yeah, and this is, it's one of the most valuable period mm-hmm. um, Neo Geo cartridges that exists. It's one of the rarest and playing it on a Neo Geo period is really really an amazing experience because that was the pinnacle the maximization of the neo geo hardware um and uh, it was a great game really cool to be able to bring it out i mean having uh, a- i like that confluence of it's it's not just a rare game that, that's hard to find it's a really good one too right right, right so yeah. in every way that was a fun event well that's kind of our specialty right is the rare games that we put out in general are also good like it, it's really hard because there's plenty of very, very rare games out there, but finding the rare games that were still good, not... I mean, because, you know, if they were good, they would have been played more. Sometimes but, it's fun to do one that's on, on a rare game that's bad as well, like uh, right. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon 2004, or whatever that is. That's a, that's a, a weird... Wheel Street of, Fighter, the movie, the game. Well, that's a Wheel of Fighters, like... like Street Fighter, the movie, the game was a real game staple. that was just bad. <laughs> Chris's game was a weird homebrew... Chinese hack thing. Yes. That became very popular. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no, no. Uh, 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 men from uh, New York came in when we had that out on the floor. And he's like, oh my goodness, I know this game. Right. Yeah. I know the code to make you this tall. Right. No, it's, it's a really goofy, fun game um, that we've we've occasionally thrown out. All right. So then we had a, a I mean, it, it's amazing because you can really see like just how busy Chris had to be over the summer. Yeah, we're, um, we're still in June. We're still in June. Uh, we've got... And I've been over at Richardson for Austin Eastsiders. Um, That's the biggest one I could recall. Yeah, Austin. the Austin Eastsiders event was really cool because, you know, cider people are cider people. Mm-hmm. And Austin Eastsiders has made such a massive, massive push into Dallas and has done so well here, which is kind of interesting. But, you know, that's, that's just Austin Eastsiders is a top quality product and their background is absurd. Like I was reading the other day, uh, there was a guy in England, basically, who'd been working at a cider bar for 20 years, the all-time cider bar. He owned the cider bar. And he said, you know, he wanted to make his own cider. But in England, it's like every other block has its own cidery because they're so big on cider there. And he said, you know what? I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to go to Austin, Texas and open up a cidery. And that's where Austin East Ciders comes from. And so, I mean, not only were they pretty early in the dry cider um, push, which is, is, is pretty dominant now, they were, I mean, their pedigree is about as good as anyone's that has ever existed. Um, their styles are, I mean, they are the industry leader in a lot of ways. And that's that might be a little controversial to say, but I don't think so. Um, well, this is, you know, this is uh, my, my, my beloved Allison out there c- cannot do gluten. So she's always big on the ciders. And when she heard Austin East Cider, she normally does not come out to my events that are nightly. <laughs> she's like, I'll be there. Because she, she absolutely works more than I do somehow. And you know, you, we're going over over all the work I do. Um, she she made a point to come out to the Austin East Ciders event because that's that's her favorite. Well, and Austin East Ciders always uh, goes the extra mile with their the stuff that they let us give away and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, like they that. had a nice rep there. I wish I could remember his um, name, well, but I met a lot. Let's also point out their product is delicious. Right, it's, it's pretty easy. And they're always really pushing the envelope um, 
with their new products. And that was kind of cool because we had a keg uh, that was relative, I mean, extremely rim- limited. Their um, tequila barrel aged cider, where they, they aged in the Dolce Vita um, casks after they brewed the cider. Um, I we- love the stories behind these <laughs> drinks. I, I love them. I'm, I'm a sucker for them. I, I produce the uh, the FP Hops podcast that we talked about that, uh, that Chad would do in the middle. And uh, I just listened to these stories on the creation of different random ciders and 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 craft beers, and I, and I loved loved the nuance that they go through. Well, and that was I actually think that was a really really good product because it didn't it actually tasted like you would expect. It had a really good tequila taste to the cider, um, so it was like a, I, I, it's hard to even explain, but it really picked up a lot from that and totally transformed the cider. Which I think at this point, with so many cideries coming out, with so much cider out there. Tasting something totally unique that's still awesome is just like a magical experience. And especially like, uh, I mean, I'm fortunate because I've tasted thousands of beers at this point and thousands of sites. I mean, like it, it, more than a lot of people, I assume. And when I get that totally new taste experience, it's so magical. Um, and I think they really know it with that one. All right. Uh, Producer saying we got to move along. Let's just, let's keep moving, guys. Yeah. Uh, all right, right, so this is a quarter of the way through. Oh my gosh, this is and, a cool and event. Thirty-two too. events later, we're already- <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we had the uh, June twenty-six Mortal Kombat Two Plus beta test event, which yes. is a Tuesday night fights on Mortal Kombat Two Plus. So we have to touch on what Mortal Kombat Two Plus is. All right, Chris, do you want to do it? Or you want me to do the what Mortal oh, Kombat Two uh, Plus? Is? I'll, I'll try. So Mortal okay. Kombat Two Plus is a a modern revision to Mortal Kombat 2 using the original chipset, all the original equipment um, to to kind of bring it up to like a Mortal Kombat 3 presentation standard. So you have like combos, uh, slightly re- redone moves to to like a, an air uh, ice for Sub-Zero, um, all in, a, in an effort to push it to the more nuanced Mortal Kombat 3 system. Um, and, and a much improved presentation. Uh, some, some little tweaks here and there, like you know, little animation glitches that would happen in Mortal Kombat 2 are corrected. Like I believe the Deadpool animation doesn't have the smoke come up at the right place, things like that. Um, yeah, what, what did I miss there? So, well, it's, it, and it, it, and it, was, it came out in 2017 and it's still being you know, right, worked, yeah. worked the, on. The revision we were using, I think, was either December the last the last stable was the last real stable one. They've got all sorts of. I mean, it's still beta, but this one right. is, is more ready for arcade use. Um, and it, it kind of polishes the game. And the important thing is, this the developer of this is literally working from the notes of the programmer of Mortal Kombat Two. And if you know anything about the story of Mortal Kombat Two, Mortal Kombat One was such a monster su- success, but it's a raw game. It's not a great game. Uh, I mean, I, I love playing it. We have it at dinner right now. It's one of my favorite fighting games, and I think it's really, really fun just to walk up to randomly mess around on. But Mortal Kombat 2, they were going to basically make Mortal Kombat 2 a lot more like UMK3 eventually became, but they didn't have the time to polish it. So this is capturing that Mortal Kombat 2 gameplay while, while kind of finishing the game how the developers kind of wanted to. Um, I think it's really cool. I think it's really neat. Uh, it still doesn't like fix it from a tournament standpoint forever. Like it's not going to make it a competitive game, but that is the goal. That is the stated goal, and you got to kind of appreciate someone trying. Yeah, and they, they have two different modes. I think it's the turbo mode. <laughs> right. Yeah, I remember the turbo mode. You were yeah. a big fan of that. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it was it was terrifying. It it. it it was it was a big mash. Of, it reminded me of Rainbow Edition Street Fighter Two because it, it just had everything tossed in it, and, it, and I don't think it was meant like the Turbo mode was meant for competition. But so, it had things like spear, uppercut, spear, uppercut, spear, uppercut as a combo. So just craziness. Tur- turbo mode. Um, they had originally tried it when they were doing Mortal Kombat Two Plus. The Turbo mode was supposed. They were just going to increase the speed of the game, right? Just make it run faster. Mm-hmm. But that was even more broken than what their current turbo mode is, where they're trying to make it balanced, but there's still a ton of infinites that are right. just, so, so, just so, obvious. Yeah, they so made the, uh, being, the uppercut, the, the classic Mortal Kombat uppercut, is is the most iconic Mortal Kombat move. Maybe Spear from Scorpion is more iconic, but uh, the uppercut was the strongest move, but it was also made into a juggle launcher. So right, it, right. It, it hit and recovered quicker, which meant literally every character had an infinite combo. So we turned turbo mode off. Right, and, 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 and it went, went over well. It went over well at that point. All right, so then we had a follow-up from uh, one of the more interesting breweries in the country, uh, a summer nights event in Arlington with Epic Brewing. Um, 
good reps, uh, lots of good beers, but they make a Monster lot of... Monster products. Yeah, they make a lot of different beers. Like, Epic's line goes from, like inexpensive easy to drink beers to these like ultra super premiums um which that's not that dark, heavy stuff i love but there's a lot in between there too um and epic is uh when we first opened richardson they were i think just i mean they were in dfw but they were still kind of getting a foothold and mm-hmm. i think they've uh they've made a lot of progress uh another summer nights event lots of stuff given away good stuff i mean that's awesome then we come to June thirtieth. All right, so we're almost out of June. We're almost out of month one of the events, and we're going to come into the first of these events that I was not actually at. This was the Space Invaders fortieth anniversary extravaganza, um, and we wanted to, you know, Space Invaders was the game that made arcades arcades. Um, yeah. They're called it, Invader Houses in uh, Japan after right? after it came out. So we um, we've done a lot of these uh, anniversary parties in the past and I, in general they've all been a lot of fun it's always really neat for burger time we actually set up a burger station outside with a live, ha- live is it coming up on the first anniversary of the burger time party we're past it actually oh no because the first anniversary as you just said is, <laughs> is the biggest we, should, <laughs> we, need, one. we need to have the anniversary for the anniversary yes um so we had uh for this event from two to six we had a space invaders challenge where if you beat the first level, you got a certificate, and I can't remember some some small piece of swag, Space Invader swag. And if you lost, you got a certificate that said you failed to complete. <laughs> Congratulations, you failed to complete the first um, Space Invaders level, and it was pretty cool. And what's really interesting is is this gets the people to play this game in a way they never would. Like there were lots of you know children, adults that had never spent a lot of time with Space Invaders that then want to get past that first level. And given how fast a game will go, especially if you're not getting past the first level of Space Invaders, um, the line moved pretty quick. Uh, we did put Brennan from Free Play Arlington in a actual Space Invaders costume. Nice. We, we had to import from the UK and spend way too much money. It was a terrible costume. <laughs> It did not work very well Needs at all. Some extra you know, padding. You looked great, Brennan. You looked great. But I still put him in. Well, what was he really was great, super excited about what, it. What though. was really great is he took. He was just like, "All right, this costume's kind of weird. How can I make it look better?" And he was like filling his. Pad, he was like <laughs> padding himself and stuff to try to make his little invader horns or whatever stick up. It was really cool. Should have, should have had him on like a, a stool, standing on the stool the whole time, so that someone would tackle him the moment he tried <laughs> to get to the ground, thus saving the world. Nice. It was like he he crushed it. He did a great job running that. Um, and I think we ended up giving away something like 45 uh, got past the first level and like 200 couldn't. Oh, um, no. I know. Isn't that terrifying? Poor like, guys. And so, yeah, we had a lot of people try and fail. A lot of, a lot of people play the game that hadn't. Um, we're, we're running the original Space Invaders out there with all original parts. Um, the, well, the Midway Space Invaders, the U.S. release. Uh, we had Taito-themed drink specials, some awesome just sweet drinks. It's really easy to make Invader cocktails and stuff because, I mean... You're going from a black and white game from the 70s. You, you have pretty much independent license to Come make on, drinks. you've got the uh, the colored gel overlays on the screen. Right, it's true. Uh, employees dressed in theme costumes for some reason. That was Brennan. We were going to try to have more and more costumes. You think Space Invaders costumes, and I'm sure right now, as we get closer to Halloween, but that you was a... You can find vi- lots of accessories. Right. Costumes are a little harder to find. So it was well, really cool. You can cool. basically be Invader. Moonbase right. and what is that? A shield, right? Maybe a, a the single shield. line bullet. Get like, well, there's the UFO. Oh, and there's a squiggly line bullet as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. But all right, so we also we we brought in some special shooting games too. A uh, uh, couple different um, that day only. Actually, they ended up lasting a lot longer. Um, shmups, including Castle Shikigami, um, relatively rare game. Uh, one of the ultra rare Neo Geo shooters, uh, and it was cool because you know Space Invaders not only and then Arlington also is loaded with like those GPI games that are direct descendants of Space Invaders uh, with Key and Balloon and uh, Enigma Two. They've got Galaga, Galaxian. Uh, I mean, they were just stacked with shooting games, so, so it's really fun to have there because I, I wanna, that's what Space Invaders inspired. I want to I want to test my memory, and uh, we can have the people listening to the podcast check me and angrily comment about it below, but. Uh, I want to say uh, the twenty-third shot that you take on Space Invaders. This is pro tip here. Is going to get you three hundred points for the UFO. So you have to count the shots and then shoot Instead it. With of, the, what is it? A hundred if you it's, get it with well, it's shot? random between fifty and three hundred points. Oh, okay. And the most points you can score in the game by far is hitting that UFO shot. So if you use your twenty-third bullet 
of the stage to blow up the, its 300 points and every 15 bullets from that one. Nice, nice. I, I, I may be wrong about that. You can look it up, but uh, that's that's the key to scoring high on Space Invaders. I didn't actually know that because Space Invaders, after like the third level, I get really tired of Space Invaders. Right. Well, <laughs> like, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to win you a I cabinet, love... so I, I looked it up. I think because I think Space Invaders is like, it's a perfect game. Um, but you have to be really in the zone. And Space Invaders is still selected a lot for like those Iron Man challenges. If you want to try to play forever, Space Invaders is a, is a good game to play forever because it's the same. You never get right. Super there's hard. there's essentially two stages: one going to the left and one going to the right, and they look identical. So, um, that because to, to me that and Asteroids, I've been thinking about it. Those were like perfect games, and you could see why people would get addicted to them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Space Invaders. The problem is it is the same thing with the Asteroids, but. Like that gameplay that they had is just amazing. I, I think the the art is actually really nice too, considering how rudimentary it is, how very well, very little they had to work with, and then the invader, the in, invader sprite is so iconic. It's great. Well, and both asteroids and space invaders had the really cool boom 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 mm-hmm. boom boom, and then the the space invaders the sh- shot sound the pew, is really mm-hmm. cool too, um, and just you know it immediately. And then we had DJ Mike B. Playing awesome kind of retro seventies inspired set, a little he little older than because you know late seventies inspired sets um, for DJ Mike B because uh, that's when Space Invaders came out. Uh, so just a cool little party uh, for Space Invaders. I think it worked really really well. I think it was neat. Um, you never know, kind of. I mean, the attendance was really great, and we were really impressed by it. But you never really know what kind of who's going to come out for what anniversary. Um, we got to do the Donkey Kong anniversary at Richardson. Uh, that was a really fun event, uh, but I it, it was so early in our existence. I almost wish I had that one back. Just I mean, it was mm-hmm. a great event, but I wish I could do it with what we know now about events. It's true, but people still loved those t-shirts. Oh, so. well, the, yeah. the shirts, they're still out there. The shirts. Oh, and we also so this is one thing we have learned: uh, the Donkey Kong cake. We got a cake for Donkey Kong mm-hmm. that came out really well. Every cake since then has been just. It tasted. Some of them taste, have tasted really well. Some of them have tasted okay. But the designs on them, we can't. We've been really unlucky with these bakeries, and we we just keep trying new bakeries, um, getting what we want on the cake to look good. Um, and when we have different ideas, um, so we came up with a really cool idea here for Space Invaders. Twenty five cakes arranged exactly in the Invader Almost. sprite. Oh, okay. <laughs> we we <laughs> we got like two hundred and eighty cupcakes. Um, and made a, an invader okay, sprite, yeah, yeah. An invader sprite <laughs> by placing chocolate and vanilla cupcakes. There's a photo somewhere on the internet. If you go to the community group, you can find it. And yeah, we made the invader sprite. And what was really cool is we had actual authentic from the early 80s Space Invaders napkins on the table. No one would ever know that, but we were able to source these and we were like, we got to do that. I'm, so, I'm so glad you went there and I was afraid when you were talking about from the 80s authentic, the, that, you're going to say soda That's or where the cupcakes came from. The icing <laughs> or something. No, so we, uh, and we actually had Space Invaders confetti on the table um, and decorating the bar and everything. Um, it was a cool event, cool ode to Space Invaders. Um, not really any good way to make Space Invaders like a tournament, but I still think it was really neat to have um, that that one level challenge has always worked pretty well. Right, right. Very, very easy to get in casually, and you win something even if you can't win it. Uh, is okay. that a all right? So should I outro. Let's let's actually try to get through the next two events, and then we'll right. we'll cut to part two. All right. So then we had, and I guess I never actually updated the game. Oh, because it was a surprise game to be announced. It wasn't to be determined. It's oh, to be announced. Oh my goodness! Are you sure you want to do this one now? Yes. All right. This is the last. This, this, this is, is the last event because this is, this one was crazy. The, so uh, you had a Tuesday night. So this year on July July fourth was on a Wednesday. So you had a Tuesday night fights falling on July third, which means there's going to be a lot of people that are off on Tuesday. It's going to be an interesting, crazy night, and we wanted to do something special um, to kind of connect it. So we needed to find an American fighting game for Tuesday night fights, and you just announced it as American fighting game Tuesday night fights. Right, <laughs> um, game to be announced. Uh, all right, so um, I guess let's spoil it. What game did it, it end was- up being? An all-American made one of the worst fighting games of all time, Time Killers. Uh, so Time Killers. Yeah. Uh, so let me actually give the background a little bit of how we did this, and I now I understand why you were like, let's save this. In the-. So Time Killers is a uh, a really really goofy game made by IT Incredible Technologies, the same people who do Golden Tee. Right. Um, they released it on the arcades, and one of the 
I mean, it's kind of cool. It's an infamous game. So they released it with a joystick and a five-button control scheme, yes. and each button represented a different body part. Mm-hmm. So you had the head, two arms, and two legs. Yeah, there's a legit a head button. And so in the game, though, you could like lose your head, you could lose your legs, you could lose your arms, and if you lose your head, you're out. But if you lose your other body part, you can Just keep on going. Fighting. And um, it was really graphically violent, clearly inspired by uh, Mortal Kombat. But, yes. Um, so we actually. We've had we sent our lead tech Josh out there with our time killers board mm-hmm. um, to hook up a custom Mortal Kombat because we needed a five button control scheme. And right. Mortal Kombat actually works really well because it's got the two and then the one in the middle. Yeah, close uh, enough. Time if, killers. If your were, head is is was a quattro, right, <laughs> right, right there. So, so time killers would have had it higher, but whatever. It works great. It's time killers. No one cares. Um, and we brought it out. We rolled it out, and everyone was shocked. They were just like, <laughs> "What is this?" And it was perfect game for that Tuesday Night Fights. Um, and so one of the coolest videos that I've ever seen emerge out of this. Uh, so Time Killers has super moves that you can perform almost any time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it instantly kills your opponent. Yes, if you press all five buttons, it's very simple. Just Body hit smash. all five buttons at the same time. You will do a move that is a fatality in one hit, no matter what time of the round or anything else. Right. Full health doesn't matter. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you're, say, I don't know, an eight-year-old, you've never played this game before, you don't play fighting games at all. You just mash all the buttons, and then you're facing... Well, go ahead and tell the rest of the story of this, this well, clip. So this created the video of DJ Terminator. Mike B going up against the kid from that just happened to be playing time killers world famous time killer player by the <laughs> way <laughs> the kid walks up there and they're like second round and the kid just looks down and you just see the kid slam the control panel and all of a sudden DJ Mike B's head is cut off and the round is over and yes. DJ Mike B's looking around and the kid's just like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and that's it that's the end of DJ Mike B's time killers right. career like, he, he, he was, lost in it, less than one second it was over and everyone was just like what what is this game <laughs> and we were like, you know, happy birthday, America. It is a colors. great, great video. Um, um, so, yeah. And that wasn't the only thing, that that uh, event as well. In between matches, which we had a lot of extra time considering they were ending in less than a second, <laughs> um, we had people from the audience reenact President Thomas J. Whitmore's famous Independence Day ID4 speech where he uh, he wards off the aliens and declares it a world holiday. Right. <laughs> over and over again. Not just for America, but for whatever. Yes, yes. We had I made a special video with the the background music only and all of the uh, the uh, a teleprompter so they could read it off the screen and uh, give their best patriotic to a standing ovation and of course we had, you know, DJ Terminator might be on an American flag. <laughs> as the, the the final little vignette. So that was, I mean, so if you if you're counting, we've we're at July third, and all of these crazy events have already happened. <laughs> the next day was July fourth. We had no special events except we it was a qualifying event. So if you had your little punch card, you could get in for half off on July fourth. We did some drink specials and stuff, but nothing. No, all locations had special things going on. Closed a little early so everyone could catch fireworks. And just a quick preview for the next part. This was about two weeks before <clears throat> Free Play Denton opened. Mm-hmm. So Free Play Denton's going to join the fray pretty soon. But for now, we're signing off until part two of our summer recap here at Free Play. Uh, we are out of here. Bye, everybody. Peace.